Today I want to share with you how to make a fermented ketchup. This is a lacto-fermentation that makes the ketchup wonderfully rich in probiotics and great for good gut health. Not something that you're going to find from a store-bought ketchup. Hi sweet friends, I'm Mary and welcome to Mary's Nest where I teach traditional cooking skills for making nutrient-dense foods like bone broth, sourdough, ferments, and more. So if you enjoy learning about those things, consider subscribing to my channel. And don't forget to click on the little notification bell below that'll let you know every time I upload a new video. Well, the first ingredient that you're going to need to make fermented ketchup is tomato paste. It can be homemade or store-bought. And if you're interested in learning how to make homemade tomato paste, let me know in the comments below and I'll be happy to show you how to do that. And this is a cup and a half of tomato paste. And to this, you're going to want to add two tablespoons of raw apple cider vinegar. Uh, now, if you buy this at the store, it'll probably say raw apple cider vinegar. Sometimes it'll say with the mother. That's what you're looking for. But raw apple cider vinegar is very easy to make. And if that's something that you're interested in making on your own, I have a video on how to do that, and I'll link to that in the iCards above. So just go ahead and pour that apple cider vinegar right into your bowl. And then the next ingredient that you're going to want, which is something I just love this, and I feel it gives a real nice taste to the ketchup, is Worcestershire sauce. And I've just got a tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce. Now, this today, what I'm sharing with you, this is a very basic recipe. After you make this a few times, or even after the first time, you'll say, hmm, I think maybe I want a little more salt, I want a little more Worcestershire sauce, or so on and so forth. But this is your basic starting point, and I think you're going to like this. The next thing that you're going to want to add, which I have right here, is an eighth of a teaspoon of cloves, ground cloves, an eighth of a teaspoon of ground cinnamon, and one teaspoon of sea salt. And this is a fine ground sea salt. I'm just going to go ahead and dump all that right in there. The next thing you're going to want to add is some sort of sweetener. What I've got here is sucanat. It's the dried cane juice. You could also add maple sugar if you have that, or if you want to use maple syrup, then you'll want to use, we're going to be adding some water to this, you'll want to use a little less water. You could certainly add white sugar to this, uh, but if you do, I would recommend using organic white cane sugar. But if you can use one of the sugars that has more uh, nutrients and minerals in it and so on and so forth, you're better off in the long run. And when it comes to using maple syrup, you can also use honey, although honey's flavor can be somewhat distinct depending on what type of honey you use. So if you do decide to use honey, try to find a very uh, mild flavored pourable honey. And another interesting option for sweeteners is to use date sugar, which is basically dates that have been ground up into a powder. And that also, like a strong honey, has a unique taste, but one that I like. And so I highly recommend that if you like dates, try experimenting with date sugar. It's a nice option and it gives the ketchup a nice flavor. So now we'll just go ahead and add in our sweetener. And then the next ingredient that I want to talk to you about is the whey. You're going to want to have two tablespoons of whey. And this is the white milky liquid that uh, uh, will drain off when you're making uh, straining yogurt to make a yogurt cheese, or you could get the whey uh, from straining some kefir and making kefir cheese, anything like that. So this is a, this is a dairy whey. Now, the other options are if you have some kombucha, you could use two tablespoons of kombucha. You could use two tablespoons of water kefir. Anything that's fermented. But for ketchup, I really like using whey. And I don't find that it imparts a strong dairy flavor. Uh, I know if, if you've been with me for a while and you've seen me make ferments, I don't like using whey when it comes to fermenting vegetables because I find that in the brine, the whey can add somewhat of a milky flavor to the ferment. And I don't like that when I'm fermenting vegetables. But the ketchup, or not ketchup, but the tomato paste, which will eventually all of this will turn into ketchup. The tomato, the tomato paste is very tangy, and uh, it's got a very uh, not strong flavor, but it has a very dominant flavor. That's the word I'm looking for—a very dominant flavor. 
and you do not notice the taste of the whey at all. If anything, I wonder if the whey actually helps to maybe soften the acidic flavor of the tomato paste. And so I actually find that it works very well. And this is sort of the key player, along with the salt, in the fermentation process, part of the lacto-fermentation process. So we'll go ahead and we'll add in our whey, and now we're going to as our final step, add in our water. And I've just got about a third of a cup of water here. Now we're just gonna give this a good stir until we get everything incorporated and smooth. Well, I've got this all mixed in. I'll take a picture and overlay it so that you can see, but this is a beautiful, Tomato, consi tomato ketchup consistency. So at this point, what you wanna do is just take a little bit and take a taste and see if it's to your liking. And at this point, you can adjust the seasonings. You can add a little salt, a little more salt if you want, or a little more Worcestershire sauce, or um, I don't add any pepper to my ketchup, but some people do, you can add a little pepper. If you do, I would recommend white pepper so that you don't see a lot of black flecks in ketchup, because you don't, in, in the fermented ketchup, because you don't normally see that in the ketchup from the grocery store. And when I make uh, fermentations of any type, whether it's condiments like this or uh, fermented vegetables, I like to get them as close to what I might find in appearance and taste to what I would find at the grocery store. And I think that if you're in the process of transi transitioning to traditional foods and introducing them to your family, the, the more familiar they are, the more, the more familiar the foods are, the more successful it can be making that transition to traditional foods. So I, I would recommend if you do decide to put a little pepper, you could use white pepper. If you want a little spice, you could add some cayenne. Uh, so there are various options, but let's take a taste and see how this is. Mmm, that's perfect for me. Just perfect. Uh, it tastes like store-bought ketchup. <laughs> Now the next thing you're gonna need is a clean quart size jar. And I'm gonna start taking this, I've got a little smaller spatula, spatula to get into this jar with neatly. And all I'm gonna do is take all of this ketchup and transfer it to this jar. Now at this point you have a couple of options. You can use a storage lid like this. This is just a plain white storage lid that is usually sold in the same section of your grocery store or the big box stores uh, where they sell the canning jars. And this is a quart size wide mouth jar. So I've got a, quart, a wide mouth storage lid. And you can just put this on and then you're gonna put this in a warm place in your kitchen out of direct sunlight. After two days, you're gonna to wanna to start checking it. You should start to see some bubbling because what's gonna happen is that the yeast and the bacteria are going to start eating the sugars, the natural sugars in the tomatoes and the tomato paste and, and the sugars that we've added and they're going to release the CO2 and the lacto-fermentation process is going to take place. When that starts happening, you will want to burp the jar, meaning that you just want to loosen it and then tighten it again. And in warm weather, this may be ready in two days. In cooler weather, it may take up to five days, depending on the temperature in your kitchen. So after two days in a warm kitchen or during warm months, if you start to see some bubbling and some activity going on, it's probably ready and it's time to refrigerate it. At that point, you can just refrigerate it like this if you like to keep the ketchup in here and then just spoon it out as you need it, or you can transfer it into some sort of squeeze bottle if you have something like that. Now, because this really doesn't take very long to ferment, I don't think it's really a big deal to have to just burp it uh, starting on the second day. But if that's something that you don't want to have to worry about, you can use one of the pickle pipes that you see used for fermentations. And these are very common. You can find them in a lot of places now. And I'll be sure to put a link in the description below where you can find them on Amazon. But all you do is just take this pickle pipe, put it on top of your jar. You're going to need a canning ring. And then you're just gonna tighten this on. And then this, there's a little tiny pinhole in here. And that's going to release the CO2 uh, when, it, uh, when it starts to bubble and whatnot. And so you don't have to worry about any of the uh, loosening or burping or any of that. It'll just take care of itself. But once it does start to ferment and starts to get bubbly, then you'll just wanna switch 
to your storage jar for putting it in your refrigerator or as I mentioned into a squeeze bottle whatever way you want to store it but you wouldn't store it with this. And in addition to these pickle pipes, there are all types of devices today for fermenting. So definitely look around and see what you like working with. You may already even have something. Uh, there are a lot of these airlock devices and so on and so forth. Uh, so definitely know that there's a big selection of various items that you can use as the top of your jar for when you're fermenting. And the nice thing about having fermented ketchup is this really becomes something more than just to dip french fries in or put on a hamburger. You could use this in so many ways uh, so as to incorporate probiotic rich foods into your and your family's diet. This is great for adding into when you're making salad dressings. You can add just a tiny little teaspoon's worth, you know, even into dressings that normally wouldn't contain any type of ketchup. But just a teaspoon is going to be very rich in probiotics and probably not very noticeable in your salad dressing. But if you want to make a Thousand Island dressing, this is perfect. Uh, adding to your mayonnaise and your chopped pickles, uh, the flavor is going to be wonderful and you're going to be making a Thousand Island dressing that's probiotic rich and wonderful for good gut health. So I hope you'll give fermented ketchup a try. It's a wonderful probiotic rich condiment to keep in your refrigerator. And if you'd like to learn more about traditional cooking, be sure to subscribe to my channel and then click on this video over here where I show you how to make homemade mayonnaise with a wonderful combination of oils that not only tasty but good for your health. And I'll see you over there in my Texas Hill Country kitchen. Love and God bless.